And welcome to SVG TV News for Tuesday, August 18th, 2015. I'm Laffer and Fraser with the details. The U.S. government today sounded high praises to the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines for signing on to the Intergovernmental Agreement Model 1B of the Tax Compliance and the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act, or FACTA. At a media conference today, U.S. Ambassador to Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean Larry Palmer says the signing of the agreement is this country's demonstration of being financially transparent to the wider world. Palmer says his government continually endures tax evasion, which deprives America of much-needed resources. The U.S. Ambassador says by SVG coming into agreement, it gives the U.S. government the ability to issue full and fair penalties against those who try to elude the system. Uh, I don't want to say this kind of information exchange is a top priority for the United States as access to information from international financial institutions is critically important to the full and fair enforcement of U.S tax laws. Every year, tax evasion deprives governments of all sizes of much needed resources to fund public services and investments. And of course, the United States welcomes uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines' commitment to enhancing global financial transparency by uh, improving and, and signing this Tax Compliance Act. Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Dr. Ralph Gonsalves says he announced in 2014 that this country was committed to partnering with the U.S. government on this venture and is proud that they are now ahead of the September 30, 2015 deadline. He outlined that signing the intergovernmental agreement will also impact import and export trade and general financial transactions. The failure of any fin foreign financial institution to submit information could result in a 30% withholding tax levied on withholdable payments and may result in the potential loss of corresponding banking relationships, which is a very critical matter for the conduct of import and export trade and financial transactions generally. I should point out that within this context, the withholding tax levied on withholdable payments. What does that mean? The withholdable payment is defined to mean, one, any payment of interest, dividends, rents, salaries, wages, premiums, annuities, compensations, remunerations, emoluments, and other fixed or determinable annual or periodical gains, profits, and income. If such payment is from sources within the United States, and two, any gross proceeds from the sale or other disposition of any property of a type which can produce interest or dividends from sources within the United States. The Finance Minister states that a National Factor Committee has been established with the purpose of enacting the necessary legislations and also spoke of the pros and cons of the Intergovernmental Agreement Model 1B. The preferred model is the reciprocal IGA Model 1A. This option is not open to St. Vincent and the Grenadines at the moment, or indeed to the current union countries. In the case of our country, um, the government does not have an existing tax information exchange agreement, TIEA, with the United States of America. Notwithstanding this, the USA has indicated that at a subsequent time, it would be willing to enter into tax information exchange agreements with those jurisdictions which do not already have an established tax information exchange agreement. This country's foreign affairs minister, Camilo Gonçalves, today reaffirms this country's commitment in joining the fight against the increase in weapons of mass destruction. The St. Vincent and Grenadines and United States Proliferation Security Initiative, or PSI, and Shipboarding Agreement, SBA, workshop commenced here earlier today at the Foreign Affairs Conference Room. The workshop was attended by several local and U.S. delegates in the armed forces, amongst other sectors, and endorses an agreement signed by Prime Minister 
Minister and Minister of National Security Dr. Ralph Gonzalez in 2010 to allow the U.S. to board SVG-registered vessels suspected of transporting weapons of mass destruction. In his address to the gathering, Foreign Affairs Minister Camilo Gonzalez acknowledged that the Caribbean waters is a point of transition for small arms and illegal drugs, and adds that SVG's vast waters often makes it challenging to monitor illicit convoys. It's a through point for weapons, um, conventional weapons, small arms, but that somehow it's not conceivable that it would be a point through which weapons of mass destruction could travel. The terrorists are continually trying to find weak spots and pressure points where they can infiltrate not only the United States, because, I mean, up to yesterday on the news, we saw that there were terrorist attacks in Bangkok. Um, but it is not inconceivable. In fact, it's almost um, predictable that at some point, um, these actors will attempt to traverse Caribbean seas, either for a local attack or for attack on the United States of America. And we have to be prepared for that. And U.S. Ambassador to SVG Larry Palmer congratulated this country for being one of the 104 countries involved in clearing the world of terrorist schemes. Since its establishment in 2003, 104 countries have endorsed the PSI Statement of Interdiction Principles. And in doing so, these states declared their commitment to stop or prevent shipments of weapons of mass destruction, their delivery systems, and related items to states and non-state actors of proliferation concern. Through participation in proliferation security initiatives capacity building activities, such as the one you'll carry out today, PSI endorses develop judicial, diplomatic, economic, law enforcement, and other tools to enhance interdiction-related activities, capacity building, and the strengthening of authorities to conduct interdictions. St. Vincent and the Grenadines today moved one step further in its quest for psychological wellness of the nation's people with the launching of two e-therapy programs. The online therapy programs, which are results of a collaborative effort between the Ministry of Health, the Trinity School of Medicine, and the Anglo-Finnish organization, is being funded by the European Union or the EU. An EU consultant, David Lees, says the move by SVG to engage in such an enterprise is dem demonstrative of the government's concern for its people. Vincentian is able to sign up at no cost to them at all for therapeutic online therapy. You will hear the phrase e-therapy is used on a regular basis, and that's what e-therapy is. It's therapies that are delivered online. So there are gonna be two programs available. One program is called Hold Your Nerve, and this is for people who struggle with anxiety issues, and that's a seven week course. The other is Value Yourself, and that is specifically with people who struggle with low mood, and that's a six-week course. Now, the only requirement of participants is, is that they have access to the internet. For those people who don't have this at home, I urge them to make contact with their local community centers uh, for assistance. Assistant Professor of Behavioral Sciences and Psychiatry at Trinity School of Medicine, Dr. Amory Patterson, says they are pleased to be associated with the e-therapy program, which she says can be evaluated and adjusted to suit clients' needs. Our role in this program would be to collaborate with Dr. Adams for the monitoring and evaluation of the program. So it would be interesting to see what, would, what the uptake would be like how many people would want to enroll in a program like this, what would be the impact pre-treatment or pre-involvement in the program, and after you have completed the six or seven weeks, ha has there been any um, de de decline in the symptoms that the person is experiencing? So our role would be, when the, the, the reports are generated monthly, those will be sent to us, and our role would be to, to assess them and to evaluate how the program is unfolding here in St. Vincent, and also to tweak the program. This country's Prime Minister, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, has again revved up Vincentians, telling them to expect soon an announcement on the date for general elections here.
speaking at the official start of the ruling Unity Labour Party's fourth election campaign in Rabaka on Sunday. Prime Minister and leader of the ULP, Dr. Ralph Gonsal, says while he is going to sweat the New Democratic Party, the elections date will soon be announced and the general elections will be held shortly after. No, I hear the saying is next month. Well, if you every month you say next month, sometime you're bound to get it right. Sometime you're bound to get it right. But I am going to sweat them. I am going to sweat them. I am going to burn them. Burn them mean them get them tired. I will get them to talk more foolishness. More foolish than what Eustace Cummins, Leacock and Friday talking at the moment. Because they don't know how to take pressure. You think 15 years in opposition easy? 15 years, a 15 days in them. Now 15 weeks, now 15 months, 15 years. And while Prime Minister Gonsalves has been telling Vincentians to get on their marks, at Sunday's rally, Dr. Gonsalves told voters to get set, adding that soon it will be time to go. If they believe that I will give them a long time, like how Kamala give Rowley a long time, down there, no, 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 in Trinidad. Shot! Shot! As every farmer knows, it ain't long road does he'll get, kill cattle, you know. The short road does hang cattle. Short road does hang cattle, and I'm going to give them a short road. And the ruling Unity Labour Party says it will be basing its present election campaign on five main things. Speaking at Rabaka on Sunday, political leader and Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonsal says the elections will be based on the ULP's philosophy, achievements and policies, among other things. Our vision, our philosophy, our policies, our programs. Secondly, our achievements. Thirdly, our plans, our policies for the future. And you will see our manifesto shortly. According to Prime Minister Gonsalves, the fourth thing the ULP will be basing its election campaign on is its quality candidates. It is a mixture between experience and youth. You notice? You see how we're doing it? You notice how we're doing it? Are we doing it easily and in style? Then, the fifth thing, this election is about leadership. Inside of the NDP, the, the members in the NDP don't want Eustace to be Prime Minister. I am telling you, the last poll that we did in East Kingston, inside of East Kingston itself, the majority of the people who are polled said that they prefer Ralph to be Prime Minister than Eustace. In his own constituency. And I wasn't ahead of him by two or three or four percentage points, you know. I was ahead of him in the leadership stakes in his constituency by 15 percentage points. In more local news, Vincentians in New York are now able to file objections to names being removed from the voters list at the Consulate General's office. Beginning today, Tuesday, August 18th until Monday, August 31st, 2015, copies of the full list of names to be removed from the voters list will be displayed at a number of locations in New York and members of the Vincentian community will be able to lodge objections to their names being struck from the electoral list 
of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. During the given period, anyone desirous of filing an objection to their name being removed can do so by submitting a letter addressed to the Supervisor of Elections stating why their name should not be removed from the voters list and present the necessary documents to support the reason for the objection to the Office of the Consulate to be forwarded to the Office of the Supervisor of Elections. Persons wishing to submit their objections directly to the Office of the Supervisor of Elections will be able to do so using the same method of submission. The Consulate General of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to New York encourages Vincentians to make full use of this opportunity to ensure that their voter registration is regularized and pledges to continue the excellent working relationship with the members of the Vincentian community in New York. Young Vincentians were recently reminded of the importance of setting boundaries and having goals as they go through different stages of their lives. Social worker and therapist Barbara Matthews, while delivering the feature address at the closing of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Coast Guard Youth Development Summer Program, told the participants that it is extremely necessary that they learn to set boundaries so that their adult lives are not riddled with chaos. Matthews encouraged the youngsters to stand up for themselves and to accept their roles as the future leaders of SVG. Can you imagine a world in which everyone did exactly what he or she felt like? Drove on any side of the road, put a building up anywhere he or she felt like, ate or drank anything he or she felt like irrespective of the consequences, had sexual relations with anybody he or she felt like, said just about anything true, untrue, false, real, maliciously intended against others, that would be total chaos. There have to be boundaries. You as an individual must know what your boundaries are. You have to be able to say to someone, if that is what you want to do, count me out. The St. Vincent and the Grenadines Teachers Cooperative Credit Union today pre presented a total of 56 scholarships and book vouchers to children of its members who were successful in the 2015 CPEA examinations. The presentation ceremony was held at the Furniture's House and member of the Credit Union's Education Committee, Dixon Findlay, says they are proud to be involved in the academic development of the students since a good education is fundamental in all aspects of one's life. Findlay also congratulated the students students in passing the CPEA exams and challenge them to remain focused in their new learning environments. And the scholarship program, which started way back in 1984, and over the years, the number of persons who would have benefited would have increased, and the amount of money they receive yearly, I can see, would have increased, and I'm hearing this year there's a further increase. So, Education is important, and we can't dispute that. And, and the, the prayer that was selected, it says, for it is in giving that we receive. And this prayer was specifically selected, because we are, we are emphasizing, is in giving you receive. So when we give out a scholarship, we expect the persons to receive a high quality education. And when you come back as doctors and as lawyers, don't be ungrateful to this credit union. We might be calling on you to, 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 be, to for legal advice, we will pay you. But we want also to, for you when you're building your homes to select the teacher's cooperative credit union. And the credit union's chief executive officer, Julian Jack, says in order to have a society of well-disciplined, law-abiding, focused, and productive young men, parents must start giving equal attention to the boy child as is given to the girl. Jack adds that boys need the same discipline and guidance as the girls, particularly in their schoolwork, so as to ensure that they do not fall between the cracks. Um, that we, but we need to pay attention to the boys, because if we don't, we're going to end up with a lot of delinquent boys. And so, not just the mothers, okay, the mother will pay, will pay not to criticizing you, but the mother will pay more attention to the girls than they would pay to the boys. It's almost natural, right? Although the boys would love their mothers more than they love their father, and the girls would love the father more than they love the mother. I, don't, I can't give you the reason for that imbalance in, in terms of how things go, but that is what happens sometimes. So we have, to, we have to prepare ourselves to help the boys and also to help the girls and make sure that we have a society that can gel as one because they must feel loved by mothers and feel loved by fathers 
just the same. Jack says the credit union aims to ensure that there is an equal balance in the educational opportunities available to all students, not only those on the mainland, but also those in the Grenadines. That sometimes the Grenadines people are complaining that St. Vincent don't see them as part of, of the whole. And therefore, when that came to my knowledge and came to the knowledge of the board, we felt a little guilty that we did not make any special effort to do something special for them because they don't have the same type of facilities that we have on the mainland in the Grenadines. And so the board has decided that it was last year, I think it was, that we give a scholarship to Beckery. And um, this year, we said that we'll give a scholarship to the Southern Grenadines. So we, know we would then have somebody from the Southern Grenadines and somebody from the, the Northern Grenadines who will always get a scholarship. If they come first, beautiful. Even if they didn't come in first and they come in last but they pass, we will still give them because they're part of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and they must be nurtured as well. Vitamalt is providing an opportunity for the youths of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to go back to school in style, free of cost. Earlier today, the St. Vincent Brewery Limited launched its Vitamalt Under the Crown Back to School promotion, which will run until October 1, 2015. Marketing assistant at the St. Vincent Brewery, Nadia Hercules, says the promotion is designed to give back to the community by assisting in the youth's educational pursuits. Have backpack, USB drive, tablet, headphones, mobile phones, mobile credit, and also free Vita. Under the crown, what you see is basically what you get. You look under the crown, you see backpack, you bring it down to the St. Vincent Bay to redeem your prize, and you know, you get your prize instantly. It's a really good promotion because I love Vitamalt, and Vitamalt always gives back. And it's a back-to-school promotion as you see we're gearing you up to get ready for school with your backpack, your tablet, your USB drives. The more you win, the more you can get to get yourself set for school, basically. I'm very excited about it. I have kids myself. Unfortunately, I'm not eligible. But for those of you out there who enjoy Bites Malt, and um, are getting ready for school or parents out there, please, when you purchase, don't throw away the crown. Make sure you look on it because they're great stuff to be won. Calvin Franklin, the brewery's marketing coordinator, says Vitamalt is fulfilling its mandate of taking care of its customers. Franklin adds that prizes are redeemable at the brewery or from any Hyrule truck. As we seek to reward our valued customers. And as we say, with regards to our tagline, Vitamalt takes care of you. So this is a way by rewarding our customers, as, as I said earlier, and living up to what we, we, we practice and more, more or less what we preach. And so you look under the crown, you redeem your crown from wherever outlet you purchase your, your Vitamalt, look under the crown, and whatever prize is under the crown, you come to St. Vincent Brewery and you will win one of these attractive prizes. 